Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome into the Gramlick and McLean podcast presented by Ingles, the official supermarket of Gramlick and McLean. Mac, it's all about Clemson, Georgia <laughs> on today's episode. Can't believe it's almost here. Starting to, I feel like I almost feel differently about this game every other day. Like it just okay. keeps changing okay. how I feel. So I'm not sure how I feel at the moment, Mac, but I know I am excited. I'll put it that way. Well, here's the good news. Today, we are loading it up. Three massive guests. Big shout out to Ross Taylor, SID over at Clemson, uh, for loading us up. So we're going to hear some perspective, KG, but we're not going to pick until Friday. So you've got some time to keep going back and forth. Uh, We'll tell you our underdog fantasy picks. We've got some great back and forth on that. We'll touch on here in a little bit as well. Uh, But right now, it's all about these guys. Barrett Carter, the All-American, the captain, joins us today. Phil Mampa, who we love talking with. Really fun to see his expanded role. Uh, and, and he kind of dives into that. Tells us what's a little different, you know, this go-around than any before. And then Marcus Tate, uh, the offensive lineman, who actually started last time Clemson played Georgia as a true freshman. Mm-hmm. So I think he feels a little bit better now that he's a senior and a grown man going against these guys. So these interviews were fantastic. Really, really fun conversations with these guys. And you're going to hear all about where they stand uh, on this Clemson game and give us some inside access. So really quick, a message from our friends over at Ingles, and then we'll get right to the interviews. At Ingles, we know your closest companions are the ones who are always there for you. The ones you trust to have your back, no matter what. Who make the hard times a little softer. And the good ones, somehow, a little better. That's what family is all about, whether they walk on two legs or four. Ingles, all the ingredients for family. All right, guys, jumping straight into the episode here. Barrett Carter, uh, thank you for joining us, the president uh, of Clemson right now and uh, maybe the the country soon. Um, Great to see you, brother. And I've asked you this a million times, but I do want to just start here because I think it is great for people to hear Uh, You had a chance to leave, man. You had a chance to go to the NFL, uh, but you didn't. You decided to come back to Clemson. What what went into that, and why did you make that decision? This place is special. I think everyone who's been here and went here can attest to that. Um, The people here are truly one of a kind. And, you know, just looking back, it was just, you know, when your dream is placed right in front of you, it's tough to, you know, delay it for a year, but – I looked at our roster. I looked at just my careers this far, and you know, I just wasn't satisfied with how it, how it's gone. So I, I have I had another year to come back, and I'm here to you know make history at this school and just become you know become a legend. So I plan to do that. So that's really what what all went into it. Barrett, we've seen some reports, different things. Mac was at practice, you know, kind of this vibe that maybe Coach Sweeney's trying to light a little bit more of a fire under this team. Um, understand that, you know, not winning 10 games last year, that's not something that they want to happen this year. Have you felt that from the coaching staff, maybe just an even more of a sense of urgency? I've I've really felt that from the whole building, coaches, Mm -hmm. players included, but, um, you know, we've all just, everyone's had the mindset just from really since the game ended last year, the Gator Bowl, just, you know, we got to do things differently around here. We don't want to, you know, of course, winning ten games is good and all, but we want to be back at the top of the mountain. So we, you know, we had to we had to change some things. And you know, we we've had this we've had the same foundation. We have the same foundation, all that. Don't get me wrong, but uh, the past couple of years, we didn't we haven't made it to the back to the top. So we've all really had to look ourselves in the mirror, and just say like, we got to do some things differently. We got to do more. We got to mm-hmm. you know be more urgent. We have to really just exhaust every single every single every single thing that we have every single day. And um, so it's really, there's been a lot of urgency from everyone in the building, not just coaches, but players included and staff members included too. Yeah. And, and really, man, I could feel that, you know, when we were at practice and, and just seeing that, uh, you know, for a couple of days that we were in Tiger town and, you know, that, that's always a great thing, right? Sense of urgency is, uh, is always what you want. There's some really high expectations be from this defense just what have you seen from your guys? How can this unit be even better? Because you were pretty dang good last year. Uh, but what have you seen from the defensive side of the ball? Just a lot of hunger and also a lot of urgency as well. Uh, I think last year we finished eighth in total defense. And uh, we did that. And there was still a lot of meat left on the bone. Like we, 
we really we had the potential to be number one if we really we left a lot of plays out there. So um, I think that's really encouraging because we all noticed that we all saw that just watching the tape from last year, just that there was a lot of plays that we could have made and we didn't make last year. So I think that's the main thing. Just where we're hungry, we know what we can do. We know we know what our potential is, and um, I think that's just what drives us every single day. Just knowing that we can be the number one defense, and um, so that's just what we're working towards. Well, and you're practicing against this offense um, in camp, and of course these weeks prepping for Georgia. We've also heard that this offense is looking pretty good. Year two with Garrett Riley, wide receivers are healthy. Cade, um, another year under his belt. What have you seen? Don't give too much away, Barrett. But what have you seen from your offense in practice? I think they're they definitely look very good. Um, I think they're just executing better. Like you said, you know, going on year two with Coach Riley. I think there's a lot of you know comfort growing with that and just really understanding him and what he wants to do as an offensive coordinator. But, you know, they're just executing their plays better. It's all, it's all been, um, what, what I've seen from them has all been really good stuff. You know, they're, they've come together as a group and they've put in the extra time, extra film, all the stuff, doing stuff off the field. So I, but I, it all comes down to players making plays and players executing. And that's what, that's right. what the game of football is. So I've just seen them just take it to, another level just from an execution standpoint and from a, you know, a comfort standpoint within the offense, but I'm excited to see what they do this year. Yeah. It's always fun, right? Cause you, it's hard to tell, you know, what, what growth looks like. Cause you're just, you're going against each other. So you, you just yeah. never know until yeah. you go out there against somebody else. How about specifically looking at your quarterback? Because again, you, you are a leader of this team, you're a voice, your face and seeing that guy and going against that guy every day, is there, a, is there a biggest difference maybe? You know, you don't have to dive into his play, but, you know, just from last year to this year, where and how has Cade Klubnik changed? Cade's really been the same person, 50 stuff on campus, and just he was a he was a leader since day one. You know, his first day here, first workout, he's in the weight room and, and the, in the indoor just screaming and yelling and doing all this stuff, so. Uh, but like I said, just going on year two with Coach Riley, I think he's just gaining more confidence and just more comfort within the system. I, I think that's pretty mm-hmm. much what probably what I've seen the most from him, just uh, better understanding of what Coach Riley wants to do and better understanding of his guys, his receivers, tight ends, O-line, running backs. I will say that's probably what I've seen the most, like the biggest step from K, just, you know, that comfort and that uh, just uh, some more confidence from him just going on year two with Coach Riley. Barry, we know you are a Georgia kid and you're playing Georgia (laughs) in Georgia um, in the Mercedes Benz Stadium. It's going to be it's going to be electric. I think the atmosphere is going to be amazing. How excited are you for this matchup? I'm super excited. You know, my first high school start was in Mercedes Benz. and I played there a couple of times. Wow. So it's it's crazy how it all works out. But, um, you know, I'm so excited. Playing in a – whenever you get to play in an NFL stadium, it's always special, but to open up against an opponent like Georgia, you know, it's it's super exciting. And they've obviously been one of the best teams in the country, if not the best. So just – I'm excited to compete and just see how we match up and just, you know, battle for however long the game takes. So I'm super excited. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's the uh, what's the ticket request like from you? Like what's the number? Not not necessarily that you ha- that you got, but – yeah. How many people text you? What was the number of, of asks? Oh, my God. I had people coming 40, out. 40, 50? Coming out of the woodworks. Just, like, people I haven't heard from me. <laughs> <laughs> they tickets. But it's probably been like, <laughs> probably been like 30, around 30. Um, okay. Yeah, obviously can't please everybody, but um, it, it, it's going right. to be a fun game. So I'll, I'm going to try to get as many people there as, as I can. But, you know, it, it's been part of <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's awesome. Um, well, let's jump into the dogs just a little bit here before we get you out. What have you seen from them on tape? What do you expect? Um, and then just what do you guys have to do to uh, to slow them down? Yeah, they're a very, very dynamic offense. They do a lot schematically, um, motion, shifts, pre-snap, post-snap. Communication is going to have to be at an all-time high. Um, they have a lot of playmakers on the outside. They have downhill runners at running back and um they're they're probably gonna have the biggest line that we'll see uh, but 
No, they're 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 a great team all around. So they they've got dudes at every single position, and I'm just I'm excited to see it, just compete. You know, I, I want to be the best, and I want to compete with the best as well. So that's what I'll get to do. So I'm just excited to line up and you know put my hand in the dirt and play against them. Hey, breaking news: Bear Carter's playing defensive end. Hey, you know, <laughs> I'm know. just kidding. I'm you never know. <laughs> Never know. Mac tried to get a little inside <laughs> secrets. <Hey>. Um, <laughs> that's funny, Mac. Okay, Barry, before we let you get in the cold tub, because I know you're in the cold tub room right now and you need to get in there, um, and we don't want to prevent that at all. Yeah, there we go. Thank you for that little behind the scenes. Uh, just the last one for me. I feel like going into this season, it's almost, and yeah, you know, I don't know if you see the Vegas line or what George is favored by, it's almost like, people aren't really giving Clemson a chance in this game. Does mm. that mm. does that make you feel some type of way, or is it something you're just trying to block out? Definitely block it out, but, um, I mean, that's, that's, that's fine. That's fine to me. You know, all those people, they can have their predictions and whatever. You know, I'm just ready to line up and play football, and, you know, no I do doubt. my talking with my helmet and my pads. So that's, that's all I that's all <laughs> have to say about that. No doubt. Well, hey, I can't wait to uh, hear it and see it in person, my man. Appreciate you joining us always, brother. Getting that cold tub, getting that cryo, negative 100 degrees. Uh, always appreciate you, man. Appreciate y'all. Phil Maffa joining us here on the podcast, the running back uh, for Clemson University <laughs> heading into this season. And Phil, we know this is an exciting time for you. Probably a weird time because you don't have your running mate and Will Shipley, who was with you for so many years at Clemson. But it's got to be a cool feeling to know you're the guy and to know that this offense is going to really run through you in many ways. Yeah, I am I'm excited definitely for this year and definitely miss Will. You know, I still keep in contact with him. Uh, I know he's doing great, but, you know, I'm just excited for this new chapter, new year, new team to be able to, you know, just influence the guys in any way I can to make us better on and off the field. I love that, man. What what has been the biggest difference for you this year? Just going into this season, either the way you prepared or what what was practice like. I mean, what, what for you? What's been the biggest difference so far? Uh, for me, I feel like I really changed my preparation in terms of just knowing that I may be getting more carries this year. So just just really focusing on the details in terms of my body, what I eat, my nutrition. Um, you know, just really keeping that stuff in mind. And also just um, uh, growing as a vocal leader. That's one mm -hmm. thing I've been really trying to do. Um, I feel like I've led great by example, but just speaking up when things are wrong, uh, just things of that nature is what I've really always wanted to uh, continue to develop. Um, even when I got here at Clemson, you know, just becoming a vocal leader and someone that anyone on the team can go to for advice or help. Sure. Yeah. And it sounds like you're kind of pushing yourself to get outside of your comfort zone in that regard, which like you said, sometimes you can just lead by example and, and, and get it done. But Phil, you talked about, you changed some things about your nutrition, things like that. Can you give me some specific examples? I'm, I'm really curious about that. Oh uh, yeah. I would say like just cutting stuff out, like certain sweet sugars, fast food, <laughs> You hey, know, that's dude. my biggest problem too, bro. It's tough. hard. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Definitely tough. But, you know, just being able to have people to keep me accountable is what really has helped me a lot in that process. Mm -hmm. I love that. And, and again, I think, uh, you know, talking to Coach B, we were just with you guys the other day and hearing about some of that stuff, man, it was awesome. You know, just to, just to see uh, how you've been progressing throughout the summer, the changes that you've been able to make. Uh, for yourself, but also I know that's really going to hit with the team and uh, do a good job for you there as well. When you look at, at again, just kind of expectations for yourself and, and you know, what you want to do this year, did you kind of have some goals and, and part of the reason why you decided to come back? Uh, yeah, I did. I mean, my, my goal is pretty simple. You know, I keep it pretty simple so that I can look at it daily, but really my goals are just to empty the tank every day and, um, be able to develop the habits and keep up with the habits that I've developed um, every day to be successful. You know, that's what I lean on, the habits that I do every day, the little things I do every day. 
I believe that those are what make you successful in the long run. So that's really my goal, you know, just control what I can control and let God do the rest. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't think there's any doubt about that. And just kind of hearing your confidence, how you prepare, you know, how you've, you know, changed your body and things like that. I think it's going to, you know, really just aid you as you continue to, uh, you know, be that type of player for your team. Uh, let's jump into this matchup a little bit, man, because it's week one. We're finally here, uh, yeah. you know, and, and I know that you're jacked up being a Georgia boy. Uh, how exciting is that for you? Number one, to play in your home state and play in an NFL stadium at Mercedes-Benz there, uh, but also to, to play the Bulldogs. I'll tell you, it's a dream come true, honestly, just to be able to play this game at this level. You know, it's something I would have never envisioned myself doing as a, like, a young middle schooler, you know, this is, this is a dream come true. And um, just the opportunity to be able to play a team like Georgia, who has had great success, obviously where I'm from, you know, it's it's just a dream come true, honestly. Like I'm waiting for someone to pinch me. Because, you, know, you know, this is what you wish for and dream about when you're a kid. And just to be able to do this and have this impact on others, you know, it's, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah, no, I, I I totally get the feeling and, and totally get it. Let me ask you this. We were joking with Barrett about this a little bit earlier. Uh, how many ticket requests have you received for this game? Is there a number? Is it 50 plus? I mean, what's it like? Uh, it's got to be at least maybe like 20. But, yeah. You know, obviously, that's, that's tough. <laughs> so, it you is know, tough. Some people, but, yeah. you know. Have you been able to wheel and deal with some of your teammates? Have you Have you gotten close to 20 or no way? It's just this game's too uh, important. Not that close, but I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm, I definitely got more tickets than I originally Good. started with. Good, but um, you know, yeah, it's it's definitely hard to get tickets for this game, <laughs> first game, <laughs> the bins, you know. Yeah, it's a big... it, 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 you got to have strategy, man. I remember, you know, back back in my day, uh, you know, I had to come up with like this plan all camp of like what could I give guys, what could I trade them, and I think what <laughs> I ended up doing was I like traded our bowl gift. Like this, I was so forward thinking. I was like, hey, I'll give you my bowl gift, whatever it is. I've got to have these tickets for that game. Yeah. So is that what you're – are you on that same path? Are you buying – NIL, you can just buy tickets now, I guess, for your guys. What, how oh, yeah. is all that for you strategy-wise? I mean, my strategy is really just been to go up to the guys that um, probably aren't going to have any family there. I just sure. asking everyone, honestly. Sure. That's been sure. the strategy. But I like yours, too. I may have to <laughs> – Consider that. I didn't think about that. Honestly. Yeah, you got to be creative, man. However you can do it. However you can do it. Um, well, hey, like I said, it is game week. And, you know, I, I know you guys have been preparing for them. Just what you've seen on film. What kind of team is Georgia? What do you guys expect to, uh, you know, see out there from the Bulldogs on Saturday? Uh, you know, Georgia's a great team. You know, they have had so much success these past couple years. And they're – well, I've personally seen from their defense, they're fast, they're physical. Um, they're tough, you know, so we got to be able to match that and bring our own toughness ourselves. So, and then the number one team in the nation for a reason. So, yeah. um, we just got to play our hearts out, do what we can do, control what we can control, and let the cards fall where they do. Sure. And you talk about that competitive, that speed, um, you know, things that – you know, you're going to need your big offensive line to do work for you. And everything I've heard coming out of camp is those guys have really thrived and are uh, are ready for this moment. And funny enough that Clemson fans might not remember a lot of these guys who are starting Saturday played against Georgia the last time as young freshmen. And, and I'm, I'm sure you're, you were on that team as well. What what does that look like from from their perspective? How's the offensive line been? And uh, what, what growth-wise, what have you seen from them this camp? Um, I've just seen a lot of growth, honestly a lot of hard work being put in and it's just awesome that we are able to retain, you know, all of our offensive linemen and have a fourth year senior in Ryan Lithicum. So, you know, our guys are pretty developed. They know what to do, but they know what to expect. They play a lot of ball. So, you know, definitely trustworthy guys. And all I've seen from them this off season is putting their heads down and going to work. Yeah, I'm um, just working, trying to improve. And, you know, I've been doing the same thing. So yeah. who who stepped up from that five or, you know, maybe even some backups or guys that might be uh, rotational. Um, has anyone stepped up and really emerged as the guy, as the leader, as kind of the voice of the offensive line? Um, I would say two guys that are really vocal in that room 
or Marcus Tate and Tristan Lee. You know, they're they're my roommates, so I get to talk oh, to nice. them <laughs> a lot. And, um, you know, they're always pouring into me and um, great leaders on this team. So uh, I would mention them. But, you know, as a unit, the O-line, you know, they come correct. And they know that it starts with them. Mm-hmm. So they bring that intensity uh, to us first. So we feed off them and we all just feed off each other. Yeah. I love that. Last one for you, man. We'll get you out of here. Grateful for your time. Uh, Kate Klubnik, just what have you seen from him development, you know, going into year two as the starter, you know, I expect to see, you know, tremendous growth. And I, I think people forget that, man, you know, year one to year two is a really big difference when you're the guy, what have you seen from him and, and progression from him? You know, I've seen him grow up really as a leader, you know, as a teammate, every, every aspect of the game, honestly, uh, being year two in this offense, he knows the reads better. He knows, you know, he feels more comfortable. And um, it's just awesome to see how he's developed as, especially as a leader mm-hmm. for our team. And, um, you know, you need that in the quarterback. Um, and he's developed into that. He stepped up into the plate um, and he wants it. You know, you could tell he's an extreme competitor. Yeah. And, you know, he wants to this team to be better. He wants us to be great. Mm -hmm. And he brings that energy each and every day. Best for last is what I like to say, big dog. Welcome to the (laughs) podcast, Marcus Tate. Uh, Brother, it's great to see you. Um, It's game week, baby. How we feeling? How we doing? Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for having me. And uh, I'm feeling good. I'm just excited for the opportunity that's coming on this weekend. And I'm ready just to go uh, put on a show. Come on. That's what we're going to do. And and here's the deal. I have been hearing great reports uh, coming out of camp just how this offensive line has been doing. Talked to some of the defensive guys. They said y'all have been whooping them boys. How's the offensive line? How you feeling? I feel good about us as a unit right now. I think uh, we took a very dominant approach to the offseason, just, you know, uh, creating unity across um, amongst the whole room, but also just uh, being very detailed with our workouts and what we're doing and doing everything together. Uh, one thing I will say with Coach Luke is he's very demanding of excellence, and that's been very good for us that, you know, yeah. there's a standard that we have to reach, and he has a very high standard for us. So, you know, we're just trying to meet that standard every day, and I think it's been really good for our offensive line, and it's showing out throughout camp so far. So, yeah. Come on. Come on. What, what what has that been like? Because I think a lot of Clemson fans are probably interested just about Coach Luke, and he and I go way back, man, to when he was at Duke. Uh, I think it was like yeah. 07. Sounds like a long time ago. Uh, long but I've known him for a long time. But – you know, just, just, you know, kind of some differences and, and what does he bring, you know, to the O-line room? Well, one thing I will say with him is he's consistent with his energy. Every day he's going to come in there with, he's the most energetic dude in the whole room. At the, when we're out there at practice, you know, every day he's talking to us, getting his hype, letting us know that, you know, it's a game, it's a game set mentality even at practice. Um, and I just think the attention to details with him has been something that's been new for us. Um, he's very detailed about every little thing. And everything has to be exactly the way that uh, we vision it. So, you know, just trying to meet that standard with him, it, it could be tough at times, but I think that's what greatness comes out of when things are hard. And I think he's just really been yeah. very challenging of us this whole off season and throughout camp to uh, meet that standard and uh, try to perfect every little detail that we can and taste perfection yeah. when we're in practice. It's not like we're just out there practicing to practice anymore. You know, everything's with sure. intent. And he's very he's very serious about it. And if you ever if you ever talk, you see how tense he is. He's probably like shaking his head, like like let's let's get it going. So you know he he kind of brings that energy and it's very contagious. I think the whole room uh, really picks up on it. You know how, how his energy is every day, even when you go in there and you're like not feeling it today. Like he's gonna bring it, and you just like boom. All right, I just gotta meet him there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, you, you're gonna be feeling it after. You're gonna be feeling mm-hmm. it after for sure. Um, I, I think people love to hear that. You know, and it's it's a position where. You, know, you got to have that, and it's one of those things. Uh, how about him as as a man? You know, just just kind of off the field, relationship wise. What has he been like for you guys off the field? Well, I, you know, you know, when he was new, you know, he was still getting accustomed to you know how, being around a bunch of new people as well. Just as we were getting accustomed to him, and you know, uh, he did his due diligence in trying to get us to go hang out with him. You know, we would go eat as a unit, and he would just join. Like he would just ask, like, "Are you guys eating together?" All right, let me just. I'm just gonna pull up. Like he would do stuff like that. Like just to come eat with us, build camaraderie. And, you know, he calls us, like, I think individually from uh, every week, uh, individually all the time, just checking in how we're doing, uh, asking him anything that he can improve on to help us, see the ways that he can help us. And I just think, you know, a lot of us uh, really appreciate it because it seems very genuine. Uh, that's something I really give him. He's very a genuine person. Yeah. Um, everything's real about him. He doesn't really fake nothing. And I can really appreciate that um, just, you know, as any man would. 
Um, and that's been sure. the best thing about it. And he he really tries to meet us to where we're at. Uh, he doesn't, you know, trying, he doesn't try to be too much for somebody else to be less for the next person. So I really appreciate that from him. Uh, even when it comes to like our personal lives, like he tries to help us in many ways that we can. So I, I've been very appreciative of that. And I think our whole line has been. Yeah, I, I love that, man. I know, uh, you know, it's a blessing to have that. And he's a great dude. And, and I've been very excited. You know, when it was announced, he was coming. I was like, here we go. You know, th- this is yeah. this is a really nice addition for all right of us. With you. Uh, tell me, yeah, yeah, for sure. Tell me a little bit more about, you know, this offensive line. Who, who has stepped up? Uh, who you've been really impressed with? And, you know, what can Clemson fans get ready to see this coming Saturday? One, well, uh, one person I've been impressed with, and I've, you guys have been impressed with him, is Blake Miller. Uh, he just, you know, he's a very consistent dude. Uh, when you watch him in practice, he's just every day he's trying to perfect it, and you can see it when it, it is intent. Uh, Tristan Lee, I mean, he's changed his whole body uh, this whole offseason, and he's very, very serious about that, and I commend him for that so much, all the hard work that he put in this offseason. And it's shown through yeah. camp. I can see the confidence in him now, and I'm just excited to see him do it on the field now. And that's been the biggest thing. Even Ryan Lipticum, he's going out there and practice every day. He, he, I finally feel when he's out there, like you know, he 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 feels like he deserves to be out there. He plays with that type of awesome. confidence, and I'm very excited about that from him. And I'm excited to play next to him because I came in here with him. So I'm just so happy that I get to play next to him and Tristan because we all came in here at the same time. Yeah, isn't that nice, man? When when you have that guy, you have that camaraderie, that leadership, but you know, just dudes that you came in with. I mean, it, it's something about that when you can make that happen. Uh, you all get on the field at the same time that. That's when that's when magic can happen at the offensive mm-hmm. line. Yep. And I think that's been our biggest strength. Uh is just that we're very together right now. Um like I, I can't say I, I felt the way I am in my past years here while I've been here, but this year for sure, like we're all very close. Uh Walker yeah. getting back. I think a lot of it he took the time to get closer with everybody around the line and amongst the team, just you know, having that time off of football and you know, we're very sure. excited to have him back and you know, honestly like for what he's doing, like I, I'm, I'm super proud of him. You know, that's not an easy thing that he's coming back from, and I really commend him sure. for that. And I think all of us on the line really just want to play hard for him and make it a special uh, season for him because he did a lot of hard work yeah. to get back. I love that, man. I love that, and hopefully, you know, you just can see, continue, you know, to see guys being healthy and being able to play and just go to work. And I feel like that's been the the biggest thing. And and I know he's excited to be back, as you mentioned there. Uh, let's talk about your quarterback a little bit because I think that we as really? offensive linemen have. A very unique perspective, right? Because we, we get to see those guys uh, in different lights. We're protecting them every single play. Like, that's our only job. Uh, mm-hmm. What have you seen from your quarterback, Cade Klubnik? How has he progressed? And is there anything that you've seen growth-wise where you're just like, man, th- I'm super proud of him for whatever it was? Yeah, the biggest thing I, I'll say that he stepped up this year is his leadership. Um, I mean, he has been very intentional with how he uh, attacks his leadership role. Um you know, he took that step of being the leader of the team. You know, he's talking to the team with every other, with every chance he gets to. Um, he's leading meetings. He's leading the huddle. He's leading the breakdowns. Like he does all that. He's always asking us to go eat. Like he, he's been very intentional about it. And man, I can't commend him enough for that. I think, you know, that's been the biggest thing for our team is us getting to know him on a personal level and having that connection for him. And I think it's really going to show. I know me and him have always been pretty close. And you know, I, I, it's very personal to me of. You know, when I'm out there, it's like, you know, let's make this, let's keep this guy clean. And I think it's going to be a lot more yeah. personal with that this year. Um, and then just from a, a football standpoint, I mean, he's just pinpoint sharp. Uh, he texts every day with intense focus. Um, like every day is the same focus. Like I, from last week to this week, I don't think nothing's changed. It's always been elite focus, you know, championship on my mind. Like I'm going to dominate my opponent. And I, I see that every yeah. day. And he, um, he kind of demands that from the rest of the offense as well. Like he goes out there yeah. and he tells us like, you know, we got to be undeniable today. And that's every day. It's not like one day he's doing it. Yeah. It's every day. And I think, you know, when you have something that's consistent like that, and it's, especially if you're leader of your team doing that, I think mm-hmm. a team can go really far. And I think a lot of the offensive players have really bought into what he's been trying to get us to do. And I'm, I'm really proud of yeah. him because he really took that next step for sure. That's great, man. And you got to have that, right? If, if we have, you know, QB, because that's, that's like you said, that's the leader. That, that's who we're all listening to. Man, if he mm-hmm. pushes you like you're saying, that, that's, uh, that's when magic can, can truly happen. Um, I talk about vantage points and, and things that we get to see differently. We also get to see that defense a little differently, up close and personal. Uh, I have huge expectations from those guys. What have you seen from camp, from this defensive line specifically? And, uh, you know, are, are they up for this task? Because they're obviously going against a really good rush attack, good good offense over there with Georgia. No, they're definitely up for this task. I think, you know, the competition that we provided them through camp has is, is prepared them for what they're about to uh, face on Saturday and for the rest of the season. 
But also, them boys yeah. are just some dogs. They put in a lot of hard work. They work out every, every time they work out, they're working together. So that's the type of camaraderie they have on that side of the ball. I mean, they got some dogs. Cuddy, uh, I mean, Demonte Capehart, uh, Peyton Page, Peter Woods, TJ Parker, Kay Denhoff, all them boys. Like, they put in the work, and I've I seen it. And a lot of them have tried to develop into leaders as well, you know, to trying to be that role because a lot of them guys are the guys on the team that, you know, what the media sees, like, you know, those are those guys on the team, and they've been trying to be very genuine with people you know, always hanging out with everybody. They're really cool guys in the locker room, but them boys are dominant. Um, they they yeah. show their talent when we're in them in practice, and it honestly gets us better. You know, it prepares us for the rest sure. of the season, and we're about to face the Saturday. And you know, that's I think that's the big reason why anybody comes to Clemson is you want to be able to go against the best of the best, and we get to go against that every day. I mean, you don't you don't face too many you know Peter Woods paying pages every day in the country, so <laughs> you know we get that that's opportunity right. every day to do that. So that's been a blessing. Yeah, I, I love that man, and everything you just said there. Uh, is exactly what Peter told us a, a couple of weeks ago in, in the end of camp there where you know he was like, our biggest goal has been there will be no surprises come Saturday when we play Georgia. You know, th this offensive line has pushed us. Us as a defensive line has pushed our guys. And that's, that's great to see because that's what you expect. And I think what you said about the competition in practice, man, when I walked on that field and we're getting ready for practice – I wasn't seeing a better defensive line than I saw Monday through Friday, right? Like those nah, dudes yeah. are monsters and it feels like that's where you guys are right now as well. No, a hundred percent. I mean, you, I mean, I, you get past our front four, then you got to go block our fast linebackers. You know what I'm saying? And I'm 320. You know, it's tough to catch a, a 235 for something <laughs> bear Carter all the time, but no, nah, I mean, it's just, it's an elite practice uh, atmosphere. Um, you have to bring it every day because you will get exposed out there. Uh, so that's that's probably the best thing about uh, camp so far and just practicing here. Yeah, no, I, I totally get it, especially that exposed piece. You got to bring it, big dog, that eye oh, in the sky. It never lies. It never yeah. lies, and it's always watching. Uh, let's jump into this matchup a little bit, man, because, again, this is a, a obviously a matchup, massive matchup, uh, playoff caliber game, number one team in the country. Uh, a lot of excitement, I know, as well. What have you seen from that defense on film uh, just that you guys look forward to going against? Uh, the most important thing I, I, I give them credit for is a very disciplined defense and they're very physical. Um, you know, every play is the same. They give the same type of effort. Every play, they're going to be in the right spot doing the right thing. And then they got some guys as well. You know, every position they have a guy at and they're very disciplined in what they do. They are capable of making big plays. So, you know, just the attention to detail for us as we're going into it has to be uh, very important for us because, you know, this game is um, – there's very minimal mistakes that you can make in a game like this. And the margin of error is so small, right. especially with a team mm -hmm. like this. And I think where they beat teams is their discipline and their physicality. And that's something that we're going to have to match this Saturday for sure. Cause they definitely had that. Yeah. Yeah. And, but isn't there something to that though, man? I mean, I remember, you know, playing in the national championship against at the time, the greatest Alabama defense ever. Right. And, and yeah. you know, all these different things and exactly what you just said there, I knew, Hey, if I took a misstep or if I didn't have my hands in the right place, I was going to get whipped. And so I think that helped me play better. Do you, do you kind of feel the same with that regard? Well, with knowing that going into the game, that's how you kind of have to attack practice as well because that's what the practice yeah. translates to the game. And uh, we, uh, Coach Luke likes to preach that uh, practice makes permanent. Um, so, yeah, no, um, just knowing that, like, you can't, you can't take no false step. You can't, you know, miss ID anything. You can't do those things because things like that, a team like this will beat you and you will pay for it. Right. Um, and it definitely – Raises your, your focus level when you're out on the field and your attention to detail as well. And it's so important, especially at the offensive yeah. line, because, you know, so many things are happening so <laughs> fast for us. Right. And uh, so many things are moving. And, you know, this team is uh, – they like to pressure a lot. They like to stem and, and twist all the time. So you just really got to be very detailed in where your eyes are going and where your feet are going for sure. No question. No question. All right, man, before I get you out of here, I do want to hear all about your foundation, uh, the things that you've got going on, how you've been able to use different things – and uh, how, how can anybody listen and maybe help? Yeah, so the Marcus Tate uh, Care Closet is something that I have going on. Uh, me and my mom came up with this idea where basically we're putting, you know, these type of care closets in uh, Title I school schools that don't, where kids that don't, might have, not have a lot at home uh, in terms of like water supplies, uh, shoes, clothes, uh, woman, pro girl products. Uh, not, not all the typical pen, uh, pencil and paper stuff, more things that like soap mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Just so, you know, when you're in elementary school, I think it's a very developmental stage and where you kind of develop a confidence in who you want to be and who you're going to be once you head into middle school. Uh, we just want to, you know, create an environment for these kids to feel comfortable and to allow them to focus on learning and not focus so much on, 
you know, if what was going on at, the, at home, back home, or right. not feel comfortable in their own skin and what they're wearing and how they're feeling. And I think that's what we're really trying to do. Uh, we've been able to get it um, in Westside Elementary School and easily. Uh, we're trying to get a few more schools in uh, South Florida as well, where I'm from in Fort Lauderdale. And yeah. hopefully, you know, uh, people have been amazing around Clemson of donating to it and everything, getting these kids a bunch of supplies that they can use. Uh, West Side Elementary lets us know every day that kids are using it every day, and it's just been a wow. blessing. And I hope we get as many schools as we can because we just want to help as many people as possible. You yeah. know, I'm very big on helping the youth because, you know, the youth is our future, and uh, that's that's the goal. That's powerful, man. That's awesome. How can people help? Is it on your Instagram? Is there a website? How can people help you out? Yeah, so there is a link on my on my Instagram where it takes you to the, to the list of products that you can um, buy, and then from there – there's a contact list on there where you can contact the people that you get the supplies to as well. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic, man. We'll be sure to have that in the link as well. Brother, great to see you. Excited for this matchup. It's and uh, we'll be there, man. We'll see you on game day. I appreciate you for having me. Thank you so much. Thanks again to all these guys for joining us. We appreciate Barrett, Phil, and Marcus for joining us. And again, Ross Taylor for hooking that up. Super excited for this Clemson-Georgia game. Now, we are not going to give picks, but we're going to give some conversation, if you will, <laughs> on number 14 Clemson versus number one Georgia, 12 noon on ABC. As of today, we're recording this Tuesday afternoon. Georgia's a 13 and a half point favorite, so it seems the line maybe is going down a little bit, Mac. The total is at 48 and a half. Super excited uh, to get into this game. But first, we have to tell you about Underdog Fantasy. Guys, their Clemson, Georgia picks are all over the Underdog <laughs> Fantasy app. you got to go check it out. Use our code GMPOD. That's G-M-P-O-D. Underdog is offering a few fun things this week. On Friday, it's Fill It Up Friday, 10% deposit all day for all users. That's exciting right there. Yeah. And then Saturday, there's a college football free pick. If you want to bet. Oregon, if you want to look at Oregon, then you can look at that Dylan Gabriel free pick. But yeah. what I'm really interested in, Mac, are these Clemson, Georgia numbers here. For example, Club Nick's passing yards at 188 and a half higher or lower. I feel like if they go higher, Clemson has a chance to win. I feel like if Cade Club Nick is lower than 188 and a half passing yards, there's really no way. Might not be good. Clemson's Might not gonna be good. Play. What are your uh, thoughts? I'm I'm right there with you. I agree with you. Uh, and, and again, um, kind of a, a new breaking news with this that, that we forgot to mention on Monday that just happened uh, in regards to free money. Who doesn't like free money? When you do this, when you sign up and you use our code for the first time you make a deposit, Underdog will give you $1,000 free cash if you put in enough to get there. And so it's a little bit interesting. It's like half of what you put in. So if you put in $2,000, they're matching you all the way up to $1,000, which is awesome a free bonus. If you put in X, it's half of that, that they will put in to, to get in there. So who doesn't like free money? I love free money. You got to do that and use these picks. And you're absolutely right. KG, we're, we're going to start it off with looking at these and some that I really love Tyler Brown touchdown running or catching. Ooh, I think that's happening. And you get really good, you know, kind of numbers on that. They do kind of percentages. Uh, so it's like a, it's a heater. Okay. It's almost double, you know, kind of the money of, of a normal bet, if you will, Cade Klubnik rushing or receiving touchdowns. That dude runs the ball. I think that that's going to be something that he takes into his hand with the run. Um, and then another one with Phil Moffa. That, that's just Those are kind of the big three that I'm thinking, if Clemson does their thing, they're scoring, right? So you feel really good about some of those. And, and it's going to be fun to see. So those are kind of some picks that I'm eyeing as we get close to Friday. Mac, what about Jake Brenningstool? 0.5 rush or receiving touchdowns, Same. higher or lower than that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. You, you have to be careful because you can't give all these people touch. Like is Clemson scoring uh, 40? True, true. Are they scoring 45? Like you, you have to pick and choose. So you might like the odds. Uh, you might like whatever, but you have to be careful with how many touchdowns you put on a certain yeah. parlay because it, it, it can get interesting very quickly. No, for sure, Max. So let's get into this game just a little bit and maybe give our keys here. I, the more, as I mentioned in the intro, I, I just am feeling differently about this game. You know, I, I'm swaying with the wind. I see something. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I think Clemson has, has more of a chance here. I see something else. I'm thinking, mm, maybe not. Reading up just about what Georgia's got going on with their depth chart, and of course, Clemson not releasing a what depth, depth chart. chart. What, what's yet? the depth chart? I haven't seen it. Where is that? Okay, projected. I was reading a projected Georgia depth oh, chart. Oh, nice. nice, 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 Georgia's got some question marks. I think specifically at the yeah. running back position. 
with injuries. And then with mm-hmm. Trevor Etienne, of course, the younger brother of Travis Etienne, not sure if he's going to play. It, there are some interesting aspects there with the run game. And I think you yeah. have, frankly, a lot of unproven weapons um, in terms of pass catchers for Georgia. Brown sure. Showers is no longer there. We know what Carson Beck can do, but it, I, I might regret this, but I feel like the Georgia offense is is scaring me a little less the mm. more information I get. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think it, it will be fascinating to see who's available game day, right? And, and that's something where, hey, you know, those folks in the SEC are holding it as tight as they can. They're not sharing anything until they – have to whenever that is or whatever that means and Clemson's reciprocating they're they're doing the exact same so the difference is you're not hearing any whispers come out of x camp being Clemson as who's not available seems like Clemson's in pretty good shape now coach Dabo Sweeney did say everybody's day to day (laughs) which I think is so funny Uh, I mean isn't that true in life Mac isn't that true I feel like I wake up and I'm like am I day to day -day. like am I good today like what are we doing are we getting ready but the the ultimate thing for me KG and and this as cliche as it sounds or as no does it sounds, it's so true in these caliber of like playoff type games who can control the line of scrimmage. And I think if Clemson can run the ball effectively and what does effectively mean? I don't think that necessarily means right up the a gap every single play. I think K does have to be involved with that. I think he has to have a little, you know, zone read where he pulls it and breaks it for a big, big, you know, kind of run there. I think Moffa has to, you know, make a guy miss and get to a big time play, but it takes something of that nature where you're able to run the football. And then on the defensive side, have to stop it. I mean, you heard Marcus Tate, they're saying, Hey, we feel like it has been good on good all camp. And we might not see something better than that on any given Saturday. That's how I felt when I was playing. That was kind of my mindset of these dudes I'm going against Saturdays are relatively easy, you know, compared to not knowing what you're doing, but physically who you're going against um, because these guys are testing me the most. So if that holds true, if Clemson is able to do that on both lines of scrimmage, you feel really good about what they're going to be able to do for the rest of the game. Georgia Tech showed us how important the lines of scrimmage are. 100%. That's for sure. And guess what? We thought it was completely a 180 yeah. flip of what we got. Georgia Tech probably also showed us that we really don't know anything going into these <laughs> first right. games. That's right. So that gives you some hope if you're Clemson because Georgia Tech also double-digit dog and they end up winning the yeah. game. Yeah. The other factor here, and Davos Sweeney talked about this with us when he came on our season preview episode. If you haven't watched our season preview episode, by the way, for Clemson, doing? get over there and do it, um, please. <laughs> he also, please, he also mentioned the turnovers. Yeah. Until I think going into this game, because of what we saw from Clemson last year, I am going into this game worried about turnovers. Like that's just the reality because sure. of what happened last year. Mm -hmm. Now it is a clean slate and all you have to do is be a little better and not have such drastic turnovers and things will look a lot better for you. So that's the bottom line. But if you get another, you know, fumble on the one yard line situation, like you lose by six, six you cannot be Georgia doing that. So arguably the biggest key in this whole game is how Clemson and specifically Kay Klubnick takes care of the football. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see it. Hey, uh, I'm pulling the pin on this episode. We got so much more to talk about on Friday. We're going to give you picks. We're going all through it. You heard the guy's perspective. You're going to hear more of our perspective uh, on Friday. Really appreciate them again for their time coordinating all this. I know there's a ton of different people reaching out and trying to get everybody uh, and appreciate their time and and making it work for us. So again, shout out to Ross uh, and company making it happen. Appreciate you guys always tuning in. Uh, We need your continued support. Go over to YouTube, subscribe, jump in these comments. Let us know. Let us know what these guys are saying, what you think about it. Uh, Let's jump in the comments and have some fun there. And of course, to our great partner in Ingalls, appreciate everything that they do for us. So appreciate y'all. Until next time, we'll see you.